Here are some foods I'll never eat again. Oh, here we go again. Honey Nut Cheerios are known to have high amounts of glyphosate. That's the cancer-causing ingredient in Roundup. EWG all right, I'm going to stop you right there. So yes, the EWG Environmental Working Group, who is funded largely by the organic industry, they took some data on some products that they pulled off the shelves and they tested for glyphosate. The data is not peer-reviewed. Remember, they are funded largely by the organic industry, so their goal is to scare consumers about conventional products so that they will buy organic versions. All right, data not peer-reviewed, but let's just pretend that their data is correct. In Cheerios, the amount of glyphosate that is on there, a 30-pound child would have to eat over 1,000 bowls of Cheerios a day for an extended period of time to come anywhere close to an amount of glyphosate that could potentially be harmful. That's how low these residues are on foods. If anything, it's showing us how safe our food is from a pesticide residue perspective. There are not high amounts of glyphosate on any foods. So if anyone is claiming that, they simply just don't understand the numbers. In addition, parts per billion levels of pesticide residues do not cause cancer. There is no evidence for this for pesticide residues on conventional or organic foods. Yes, organic uses pesticides too. To say that PPB levels of glyphosate residues cause cancer, there is literally zero evidence for that. And it's not for lack of evidence either. Glyphosate is one of the most tested substances in our food supply. Cheez-Its contain the preservative TBHQ. This preservative has been linked to vision issues, neurotoxic effects, yeah, she kept going, but I'm just going to stop it right there because this is the exact reason why people need to cite evidence for their claims. What evidence are you referring to where TBHQ is causing these effects? Because there's no evidence showing that the very small amounts of this antioxidant that are put into foods to help keep fats from going rancid shows any of these effects in humans at those low doses. So she either just read this somewhere from somebody else who's very misinformed and just is repeating it, or she's referring to rodent studies where they were given very, very high doses of this ingredient and some effects occurred. You cannot take those studies and just say that it causes those effects in humans at the very low doses in foods. Again, this is exactly why you need to be citing your studies when you are making claims like this. This French vanilla coffee may contain canola and soybean oil, which are both highly inflammatory oils. But it also contains carrageenan, which has been linked to IBD, IBS, rheumatoid arthritis, and colon cancer. And there we go, finish it out strong with an inflammation and another cancer claim. No, those oils are not inflammatory because that's not how foods work. Again, you need to be citing your studies. What are you talking about with the carrageenan? Because there's a lot of confusion where people are citing studies having to do with degraded carrageenan, which is not food grade carrageenan. And again, in high doses in rodents too. If you have GI issues and this exacerbates those issues, of course, avoid it. That doesn't mean that it's bad for everyone or causes cancer.